I have a huge announcement to make today, but if you've been following my channel, then this will absolutely come as no surprise. So give me just a few minutes to explain what this change is and how I came to this conclusion and what this means for people wanting to get hired at a legacy airline moving forward. What's up everyone? My name is Aaron, also affectionately known as AA Ron. I'm a 757 and 767 first officer at United Airlines, and I'm also a pilot interviewer and volunteer aviate coach. I'm really just here to bring high level information down to everyday pilots that need guidance and insight into the world of landing at a dream airline. Now I wanna bring up some interesting information that I've dug up regarding the current hiring minimums for United and Delta Airlines. Currently, the only two legacy airlines hiring at the making of this video. Now I decided to run a public poll on a few different public pages and ask people to vote on which category applied to them and the results prove a scenario that I have literally been screaming what happened for the last several months. Now here is a pie chart showing the aggregate percentages of several hundred votes compiled from people who have received job offers from Delta and United in the last 90 days. The first point of interest is only 2.3% of recipients accepted had no bachelor's degree in less than 1,000 turbine PIC time. 5.2% had no bachelor's degree, but did have greater than 1,000 turbine PIC time. 37.4% had a bachelor's degree or higher with less than 1,000 turbine PIC, and 55.2% had a bachelor's degree or higher and had 1,000 or more turbine PIC time. So let me simplify this data just a little bit. You have less than a 2.3% chance of getting hired by a legacy carrier in the near future if you do not have a four-year degree and you do not possess at least 1,000 hours of turbine PIC time. Let's say a pilot with no degree crosses the 1,000 hours turbine PIC mark. Their odds nearly double but only from a 2.3% chance to a 5.2% chance. Now let's say that said pilot has over 1,000 turbine PIC time and then attains a four-year degree. Well, their odds would literally jump by about 17 times from a 5% chance to a 93% chance of being considered. Now what this confirms for me is that even though the four-year degree requirement is listed as preferred for all legacy carriers, the trend indicates that the airlines are choosing to invite 92.5% of their applicants based on having at least a bachelor's degree or higher equivalent. This means that if you do not have a four-year degree, you will likely be required to possess a very, very large amount of PIC turbine time to offset not having a four-year degree. If you do not have a degree, you will find it approximately 12 times harder to get a job with a legacy carrier that is currently hiring such as Delta or United. This emphasizes that the four-year degree requirement is the number one priority of Delta and United Airlines as far as hiring requirements. So please, if you are watching this in your infancy of your career, please make sure you are factoring in getting a degree in the future because not having this requirement can significantly hinder your ability to find yourself flying for a legacy airline down the road. That being said, I believe that in a time like this where the industry has so little overall industry demand for pilots, smaller players like 135s, corporate, or regional airlines can drastically steepen their hiring requirements. So don't focus on what's currently in front of us and assume the opportunity is gone or the golden wave has passed, but because that is not how this industry works. You need to pursue the dream and pursue it ferociously because when things get tough, people quit and people stop pursuing. And in this industry, that's what makes a perfect opportunity to get in where you can give yourself a competitive advantage where you can be the only pilot trained and qualified in what will become a shortage in the next few years. Soon enough, there will be a shortage again. And by the time that happens, people will only then be deciding to get into aviation. And those will be the people that are always chasing a negative feedback back loop. So go against the flow. Take a chance and step out there to pursue something you love for yourself and not for the money. The career progression and happiness will follow no matter where you find yourself in your journey. Lastly, as the Roman philosopher Seneca said, 
The path to success is where preparation meets opportunity. So think about that. If you want to know more about the career and are interested in pursuing professional aviation or are in the time building or rating attaining phases and interested in seeing how much pilots can make in a career or what the career progression of a legacy pilot looks like, then I highly recommend checking out one of my previous videos titled Legacy Pilot Total Career Earnings to see how much one could make if starting at a legacy career with United, for example, and other things like how long would it take to hold the 757 as an FO or Airbus 320 as a captain in each base at United. Thanks so much for making it to the end of the video with me. This is the Pilot Pulse channel. I'm Aaron as an AA Ron, and I hope you all fly safe and keep chasing those tailwinds.